Hello and welcome to Tonic Studio. My name's Karen. And I'm Leo. And today we are here with another Tonic Tuesday where we give you lots of tips, techniques and tutorials. Today's uh, Tonic Tuesday is all about stamping and Leo is going to show you lots of different techniques. So today we have lots and lots of information on stamping for you. So if you've never stamped before, or you're looking to sort of refine your skills, we hopefully will have some tips and tricks and techniques that are gonna help you. Um, so very basic techniques, right the way through to some advanced things that you may not have heard of before or are unsure how to do. Um, we're gonna have a look at some of the tools that are gonna help you with stamping, um, how to clean and care for your stamps, and also then, like I said, lots of tips and techniques along the way. As always, if you have any questions while we're going along, pop them into the comments below and we will come back through and answer as many as we possibly can for you. So what are stamps? Stamps are lots of things mm -hmm. you can um make a stamp you from can certain things yeah but at tonic studios here we sell photopolymer stamps um you can get red rubber stamps you can get lots of different types of stamps mm -hmm. but we are going to concentrate on photopolymer stamps because it's what we have here um photopolymer are good because you can see where you are stamping so you can when you're looking at your project you can actually see right through yeah. to where that I is love going that about to these. go. It makes yeah. it so much easier, doesn't it? It really, really does. It's got some flexibility about it. Mm -hmm. It's got a little bit of a squish, a little, little bit of cushioning that you can get a nice, clean image with them. And first polymer is great. It clings to stamp blocks and stamp platforms all by itself. You don't need to have any stickers mm. or any kind of adhesive or anything nice. to get it to stick. Um, you then have obviously your backing sheet that will have the images of the stamps. So the actual stamp itself is completely clear. So if I pull one of these off for you, so that you can see. And the way that we sell them, like I said, is we have your printed backing sheet on here for you that has the image printed onto it. But the actual stamp itself, is completely clear so you can see through it. You can see your you can see the shape. You can see the shape of what you're trying to stamp. Yes, you can kind of see the carved or the yeah. moulded. And then this is the effect that you'll get. Yes. When yeah, you do stamp. Exactly. Um they can be used with a variety of inks. Um so obviously we will have our Nouveau hybrid ink. You can mm -hmm. also use clear mark or any other water based inks. Some inks will stain. So if you have um, a bright red ink or some purples or greens they will leave a tinge I think it's, stamp. it's just to do with the amount of pigment in it that. It is, exactly, ink, yeah. Highly it? pigmented colours mm. tend to stain more. It's not going to affect how your stamps work in the future, though. It just means they're a little bit stained, unfortunately. Mm. Um, we do recommend that you don't use any alcohol-based products on photopolymer stamps specifically, because mm -hmm. it can actually degrade the photopolymer. It makes it go kind of weird and tacky and yes. a bit nasty to touch. So <laughs> we would recommend you avoid that where possible. But they are easy to clean. Mm -hmm. They really are. I mean, we have some nice stamp cleaning solution here, uh, but we also have a cleaning cloth, which just cleans them using water. Exactly. It's very, really, really easy. very good. They can be washed in uh, sort of soapy water as well. And we do recommend that for brand new stamps. Just get that manufact manufacturing residue off them. So, because they go through a process mm -hmm. when they're being manufactured and it just gives you a nice clean impression. That's it, they might have like a little bit of something on there that's yeah. you're gonna get a clean stamp or sometimes there might be like little bits or yeah. hairs or fibers on mm -hmm. there that are gonna affect the impression. You definitely don't want that. Yeah, you do not want that. But you can also, to get rid of that, you can take a nice clean eraser mm -hmm. as well. That'll, that'll get that off as well. Okay, so let's start with some very, very basic stamping techniques then. So I have picked um, some of our stamp clubs to work with today where we have probably the majority of our stamps here at Tonic Studios. So I have got this one, uh, lovely little Dino Roars. I, I love them, you're awesome. <laughs> they are very, very good. So your stamps come like this. They are on a carrier sheet, so that's the one that has the printed bit on and they also have then a protective sheet on the back. So you're gonna wanna peel this off first of all. But keep it. Do keep it, exactly. It's gonna help mm -hmm. to protect them, keep them clean and dust free. Like, cause they do have that kind of cling tack to Tacky. them. They will attract 
bits yeah. of dust and paper and stuff and in the bathroom. if you're embossing and things like that, you'll, mm-hmm. you'll always get embossing powder on your stuff. Everywhere, or <laughs> glitter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But again, like we've said, you can just wash them. Just wash them, absolutely. Soapy water, let them air dry. Didn't say how to dry them, did no, I? No, that's a good let point. Yeah, dry. don't use heat tools nope. on your stamps. No, they don't, they don't like that. Just don't let like them air dry. <laughs> <laughs> so when you have your lovely sheet of stamps like this, like we said, photopolymer does have that kind of flex, that little bit of squish. So when you peel a stamp off, it is going to bend and kind of stretch slightly. So I recommend you peel your stamp off, put it down onto a flat surface and give it a couple of seconds and it will snap back to the shape that it should be in. Especially for sort of longer sentiment yes. stamps and things like that. Yeah, or if you've got like some of the bigger background mm, stamps, they can get definitely. a little bit warped around the edges mm-hmm. because you kind of, they have they cling very well yeah. to their backing sheets. So you're kind of stretching them to peel yeah, them off. Yeah, the bigger the stamp, you do tend to. <laughs> yeah, warp it a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. So give it a few seconds, just put it down in your surface like this. And then we're going to start with just a stamping block. So there are lots and lots of different types of stamping blocks you can get. This is one that we used to sell here at Tonic Studios. We don't, unfortunately, sell them anymore. We do not. But, you know, there are small um, acrylic blocks mm-hmm. that you can get. You can get that with finger holds, whatever works for you. Grab a stamp block. And then I'm literally just going to place this over the top of my stamp, press it down firmly and pick my stamp up. And there is my stamp mounted on my block. So... We're going to use, I've got a whole load of card cut for this because, you know, if we're demonstrating lots of bits of stamping, probably you're going to need some card. Practice your stamping. This is probably something that you're not going to just do for the first time go, yes, I'm an expert at stamping. Never need to look at another technique. You're going to need to practice. (laughs) You are. So if you've got scraps of white card, this is perfect for using those up. Mm -hmm. Um, Always test stamp as well with whenever you mount a stamp onto a block, test it first before you put it anywhere near your project. See how it stamps, make sure there's no nothing on it, that it is mm-hmm. giving you a proper clean impression first of all. So have some scrap card handy, it's just a very useful thing to do. So I have here one of our glass mats, which has a nice grid pattern on here. So I'm gonna line my card up with my grid, because this is gonna help then my eyes to line up my stamp as well. I'm gonna bring in some ink, we'll start with some black ink today. And for inking up your stamp, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can take your stamp on the block, and gently tap it onto the surface of your ink pad. I should have brought some media grip down, shouldn't I? We say this every time. Forgot. You've got some in your um, stamp platform there. You could just open your stamp platform up. Let's do that. So, oh. please hold. <laughs> Talk I'm amongst yourselves. I'm not to uh, <laughs> put my elbow in my ink pad here. So, we have a piece here of our beautiful Tim Holtz Media Grip. Oh, it's amazing. Which just clings to the surface. We love the stuff. And if I now put my stamp pad onto here, there we go, it doesn't move. No longer do we have that annoying rattly noise. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I've lined up my cardstock on my grid again. I'm gently tapping this on. So our ink pads are quite firm. Mm -hmm. Um, So you can give them quite a solid tap. If you have a more squishy ink pad. That's more like a felt. Base, yes, isn't it? yeah, exactly. If your ink pad is more squishy, don't ram your stamp no. into it because what will happen is you'll get ink in the in between where the impression is going to yes. come. But you can get that transfer then over onto you can. what you're stamping. So you press a bit harder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You definitely don't want that. No. So um, some of my colleagues, you say you just kiss the mm-hmm. ink pad. You know, just give it a yep. gentle, gentle kiss. And then I'm going to line this up. So using the lines that I have on the grid around me. You've also got lines on your stamp block there. Which is I have, thing. this is going to help me very well. Uh-huh. So I'm just going to press straight down, give it a couple of seconds and lift straight back up. That's it. That's as simple as stamping mm-hmm. gets, right? The other way to ink your stamp, if you don't want to do it that way, put your stamp down. I am I am this camp. Yeah, you yeah. do it this way, do you? I'm a stamp, I'm a, a, a pad to the block. I do find this easier because you can see where you've got ink and if you have any missing spots, which is great. Also, another tip I remember from years ago, that if we didn't get a good impression first time, we would stamp with um, our our, our clear mark. Mm -hmm. So um, an embossing pad. Stamp with an embossing pad first, take a little bit of that off. And you've got like a bit of a bit of a surface for it to catch to then. Yes, yeah. Exactly. That was another another little tip that I remember from ooh, eons ago. A previous life, <laughs> a shall we previous say? Previous life, I know. <laughs> 
exactly. a previous crafting life. So let's give that a go again. So again, I'm just going to make sure I've lined up my image. I've got my grids lined up. Press them down and lift straight back up. Now you can see on this one, I didn't quite get a good impression ah, here. Mm -hmm. When you're stamping with a block, I would recommend you don't try and re -stamp. Oh, you you will not. <laughs> you will I'm not. I'm going to try and this. demonstrate this just Go to on see. Then. Go on then. So, yes, you can see through your stamp. You can see the image. And you can try. I'm probably going to get some head in shot here. That's okay. You can try your hardest. We can't see the stamp this. now. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> You can try and get it in the same place. Oh, that wasn't bad, oh, actually. Oh, wow. Okay, I need to demonstrate that so it doesn't work. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Leo is too good a stumper. Oh, if, now, if you give that to me, it's never going to light up. Okay, let's try again. So, if I try... I bet I can't do it twice in a row, though. Mm. Hold on. And I am trying to line this up. I genuinely am I would never to. even try to line that up. Yeah, no, that hasn't worked uh, this yeah, time. No, you so, have. I've got like a little double line or a ghosted image. I mm -hmm. mean, if that's a, the look that you want, go for great. it. <laughs> but probably that's not the look that you want. No. So if it doesn't work first time, stamp again. Don't try and re-stamp. Yeah. And this is always why I would say that I would stamp onto a piece of spare card and mm -hmm. cut out my image and put it onto my project. Absolutely. Rather than stamping directly onto yeah. my finished oh, I project. I totally agree. Could you imagine if you'd spent hours <gasps> doing a nice background oh. and then you don't quite get your stamp right? No. Don't no do chance. that. So, a couple of other tips with stamping with a block. For photopolymer stamps, they don't have... Um, obviously, with a red rubber stamp, you have that layer of foam. Yes. Which gives you more of a squish. With a photopolymer stamp, you don't have that. So, sometimes, if you're not getting a crisp image, putting a flexible mat underneath your cardstock can help. So, I have here one of our green cutting mats from our tangerine. This is the embossing um, rubber mat that comes yes. with your green plate. So this is just going to give you that little bit extra squish mm -hmm. under your cardstock. And you can see this one is quite fine and this one is a slightly thicker image yes. because it has got... It's got a bit of a cushion underneath yeah, it, Yeah, exactly. It? it gives you that extra little bit of padding, mm -hmm. which you would normally have with a red rubber stamp and the right. foam. So, basic stamping with a block. Hopefully, you've got that far. All right, so next up then, let's have a look at stamping using a stamp platform. So this is the stamp platform that we used to sell, our Tim Holtz stamp platform. Again, sorry, it's not currently in stock, mm -hmm. but if you have this stamp platform at home or any other stamp platform, all of these tips are gonna to apply to you as well. So stamp platforms are great because they allow you to get perfect positioning every mm -hmm. time. They allow you to stamp things multiple times. So say you are doing six cards and you want the same stamp in the same place on every single one, use a stamp platform. It's going to make it so much easier for you. If you mess up your stamp and it yep. doesn't quite go right. This is why I use a stamp platform. <laughs> <laughs> but because your stamp is in a fixed place, your cardstock is in a fixed place, you can just re-stamp it as many times as you need to mm -hmm. until you get that perfect impression. Yeah. So yes, we love using stamp platforms. And to be honest, the majority of the stamping that we do yeah. is in some kind of platform or another. Or... If you wanted to stamp an image with a colour and then stamp over the top mm -hmm. with a clear embossing pad and heat and that heat embossing emboss it. pad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's another another good reason for using a stamp platform. Absolutely. Mm. So yeah, we love using a stamp we platform. Do. We and do. Like I say, the majority of the stamping that we do at this point is with a platform. Yeah, it just makes our life so much easier. Because we don't have time to restamp things five times until we get the Absolutely one perfect not. image we need it the first time. <laughs> so they work in a very similar way to using a stamp block. So I still have my stamp on my stamp block here. Now, photopolymer stamps, you literally just lift from one side, peel, and it comes away. Nice and easy. So here I have my stamp platform. I'm going to pop my stamp just to one side for a second. Open the lid. Now, we have on this one specifically... You have two sides to your lid. It will say clear on one side and it says rubber on the other side. So you can use red rubber stamps in this as well. We're using a clear stamp, so you want to make sure that clear is the word that is readable when it's closed. Very important tip for that. Yes. Because it's not going to work if you've got it the other way around. <laughs> so I'm going to take a piece of card, pop it anywhere I want on my stamp platform because I'm just doing one stamp. Add some magnets. We like to go with four. For stability. I am a four magnet yeah. stamper. 
just helps to keep your paper rock solid. Yeah. And the other thing is we have our piece of media grip in the back. This is an amazing tip. Oh. This is one of Tim's tips and I yes. absolutely love this one. It means that obviously this is like a shiny plastic in the back of here. Cardstock and shiny plastic, they're gonna slide. Of yeah. course they are. Piece of media grip in the back, your cardstock's not going anywhere. It, it has really is not. And it helps it to cling that little bit more when you're mm -hmm. lifting the stamp up as yes. well. Because, because that's when your card moves, doesn't exactly, it? Exactly, exactly. So taking my stamp, I'm gonna put it where I want it to be. Oh I've got a bit of hair on there now. Make sure there's no hair on your stamp because it's not <laughs> gonna uh, stamp properly. There we go. So I'm gonna put my stamp where I want it to be on my card. So say I wanted my little pterodactyl somewhere down here next to a sentiment. Gonna move my magnets a little bit closer. Obviously not too close. You don't want the magnets to uh, all mm -hmm. smush together. But the magnets are gonna hold your cardstock down for this part specifically, because you're gonna bring the lid over, press it over your stamp and lift it. Now because your photopolymer stamp is slightly clingy, it will cling to the card. And if you haven't got your magnets close enough, you might find your card kind of domes yeah, up or lifts up in mm. the middle. So make sure you've got your magnets fairly close around your stamp. Top tip for you there. Mm -hmm. And then we do exactly the same. We take our ink pad and we make sure that this is in shot. <laughs> tap this all the way over. Yeah, you do have to tap to the stamp. There, yes, don't you, you can't. No. Well, I mean, you could take the whole lid to the stamp mm. ink if you wanted to, but I probably wouldn't recommend it. Just lift your ink pad up and do it this way. Far easier. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you simply close the lid smooth over where your stamp is lift them up and Perfect. there we have a little pterodactyl so again if it doesn't stamp correctly like say you know it is slightly a bit fuzzy on the top of here doesn't matter the card hasn't moved the stamp nope. hasn't moved i can re-ink and re-stamp as many times as I want. I love this about a platform. It's gonna be in the same place every mm -hmm. single time. Like so. Fabulous. If you are stamping um, the same image onto multiple projects, then I would recommend you put your cardstock in the bottom corner mm -hmm. um, so that you know that it's gonna be in exactly the same place every single time and then work from there. Align your stamp where you want it to be, and then you can just switch out your piece of card, you know, stamp, switch it, stamp, it switch it, mm -hmm. and you could stamp as many as you need for a project. So, love a stamp platform, one of our preferred stamping methods. Let's look at some advanced stamping techniques then, and some of my favorites in here. So the first one that we're gonna do is using one of the things that Photopolymer does best. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take here a little sentiment. So I have again another stamp club, um, and I've got a nice little sentiment here just for you. One of our favorite sentiments, we use it all the time. We do. It covers so, so many things, doesn't it? Does, it does, it really does. <laughs> so you can see this sentiment is nice and straight. It's on a nice straight line, but. Maybe I don't want it to do that. Maybe no. I want it to curve, I don't know, around a flower or mm. something like that. So because photopolymer can be bent, you can manipulate it. So I'm gonna lightly put it onto my stamp block, hold the middle and then actually bend the edges to give it a little bit of a curve. And you can keep manipulating this as much as you need to. And because photopolymer will cling to whatever it's stuck to, it will go into whichever shape you want it to be. So hopefully you can see, mm -hmm. I now have that curved on there. Let's get some ink on there so we can, we can have a good look. bring my mat back in. Yep. You can also do this on the stamp platform, which is easier for me to show you this mm -hmm. on a block than it is on the platform. So ink this up. Sure, maybe I stamped it straight, but we can do that after. So I want to go just around the corner here. There we go. Just for you. Just for you. Um, stamped perfectly as well. A version of perfectly. But yes, yeah, so we'll go with that. <laughs> so just to show you how the stamp would look. So if I put it back down on here, give it a few seconds, and it'll snap back to its normal straight sentiment self. Ink him up again. And there you go, now Lovely. it's in a straight line. And you can do this for any long, thin stamp. Mm -hmm. It's probably best for this. The thicker or wider the stamp is, the harder it is gonna be the, to manipulate it. Yeah, the less you'll be able to, yeah. won't you? Yeah, exactly. That's a really easy way to mm -hmm. 
change the look of your stamp. So, like I said, perfect for sentiments. If you want them to go around or something, mm -hmm. um, you can give them a wave. If you've got like a wavy edge to something, you I've, can really go wild with I've this. I've been a little bit naughty in the past and I've slipped my sentiments. You can so cut too. them as well. I mean, that is one of the <laughs> nice things about photopolymer. Yeah. They are quite thin stamps. They are easy to cut. Mm -hmm. And you can snip out the words that you don't so want. If I wanted this just for you to be underneath each other, I would just do a little snip there, a little snip there, and pop them all together on my, my on little a block. stamp. Yep. Um, but also, you can just mask it, can't you? You can do that as well, <laughs> if you you know if you prefer to do it that way. But the thing that I love about being able to cut them is that because of the way photopolymer stamps are, you can then just rearrange them back on yes. the block yeah. in the straight line again. It's yeah. not going to be a problem, and you are still going to be able to use them yeah. as they were intended. Mm -hmm. Very handy. Mm -hmm. Next up then, we have one of, I think, Karen's favourite <gasps> techniques. Love it. This is where we are going to basically make the most of your supplies. So we did cover this in we our mm, Paper Crafts to Sell video mm -hmm. way, 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 way back when. But it bears repeating in stamping, I think, as well. I think so. This is... Uh, you basically taught me this, and I think it is amazing. It's so something I thought of doing. Yeah. That's the thing. Just did not Fair think enough. of it. It's amazing. It really is. So let's say, for example, I'm making hmm, 10 party invitations mm -hmm. and I want to use this cute little elephant on here. I want to stamp him and I want to die cut him. Now I could stamp them all out on a sheet. You're going to have to make sure you leave enough space around them to you get the dye around them. Mm -hmm. Probably you're going to end up messing up a couple of the stamps. Mm -hmm. Potentially you're going to have a stamp that's too close. You're not going to be able to use it to die cut. So, so you've lost two of them. Exactly. I've uh -huh. got a solution for you. Mm -hmm. We're going to die cut first, which is what I've done here. So I had a little scrap and I have cut myself six little elephants. And you can see the chance of me lining up these stamps perfectly to be able to die cut these. No chance. No, I would probably maybe get four of these elephants mm -hmm. on here if I stamp them first. Mm -mm. So I have die cut them here on my little stack of die cuts. I've also then used a little scrap of white that I have and cut one more out of the centre. And this is going to become my template. So this goes into my stamp platform. All of the magnets come in again. Because you know we love a magnet. We do love a magnet. And then I'm going to take my stamp, which I have just flipped over the edge of here. Where did I put him? Easy oh, stuck on, on this side. <laughs> and I'm going to sit my stamp into this little die cut template. So make sure he's all nicely lined up. He's this is sit. so, so good. Nicely into the edges of there. Love it. Pick him up on the lid exactly the same as you would if you were stamping with the platform. Because we've got the media grip in the back of here, it's going to grip these little pieces of cardstock really nicely. And we're going to pop this back in. It's so clever. We're going to ink up the stamp. Oh, more in shot. There we go. <laughs> so, ink up a lovely little elephant. These are so cute. They are adorable, aren't they? Definitely before my time at Tonic. But yes, it you was. You better believe that I have acquired this. <laughs> stamp Funnily enough. <laughs> so give that a nice press all the way over the surface. Oh, no. And there is our perfectly stamped and die cut little elephant. And then we can put another one in. But because of that media grip, there is no movement at no. all. And obviously, you've got. You, you're just settling that back into the die cut, aren't you? So, mm -hmm. you know. Exactly the same yeah. space that it came out of. Uh huh. And if we go and again. And then you can just go over and over and over. And if one of them doesn't stamp correctly, it's not a problem because it's already in a place that it can't move from. Yeah. So his ear isn't quite right there. Ear or ear. Yeah. <laughs> depending on who you're talking to. <laughs> If I say ear, it, it just doesn't sound right coming out of my mouth. And if I say year, it doesn't sound right either. <laughs> it so, really uh, does not. <laughs> there we go. And now he is also perfectly stamped. And you can just keep on going oh, until you have so a whole good. little parade of elephants. Love it. Love it. Super, super easy tip. But one that's going to help you to get the most out of your supplies. Oh, my favourite technique of all, of all the and techniques. And it's going to save you time, I think, yes, as well. Yes, I think so. Next up then, we have one of my favourite techniques. So this is where you can use multiple inks on a single stamp to get kind of like a multicoloured effect. 
super simple to do again so i have again another stamp club i told you we're using a lot of these today it's the perfect place to go if you're really talking is. about stamping it really is so i have this lovely rose image up here that i'm going to use for this and again i'm going to do this on a block because it is easier for me to show you than on a platform so pop it onto my block and i'm going to choose a couple of inks that look fairly different from each other so hopefully you can see the difference so let's go exotic orchid and oriental iris i'm going to stamp into the I think paler of the two <laughs> so give this a nice inking all the way over now stamp this just as it is first of all so you can see how it looks with this color again i've got my green mat behind to give me that extra little bit of cushioning Firm pressure, lift straight up. There we go. One pink rose. Maybe I want it to be a little bit more coloured though. Okay. So let's give it a little bit of pink and then I'm going to grab myself a sponge dauber. Take some of the purple. Plenty of the purple. Plenty of the purple indeed. We want to make sure we've got lots mm -hmm. and lots of ink on here. Hold on. Give it a good squidge. There we go. And I'm going to dot this just around the edges. We should have got a bit of media grip again. Should have done. See, we, we need to bring some down. Can you yeah, write that down, please, Cam? We need some media grip. Media grip here. for downstairs. Okay. So again, I'm going to press this straight down. You can actually see that purple on there. You can? Yeah. Good. And there you go. Now I have a purple ah. and pink image. And you can do this with any stamp yeah. and any colours that yeah, you want. I'd so I like think that you could... Mm -hmm. just hit the tops there with the colour exactly. and then green for the rest that yep. would be really nice or this nice. one here that has the green yes. leaves around the edges you could yep. do green around the edge so ink it all up and then just add your green mm -hmm. around the edge and so on and so forth but it means that you can use multiple colours on a mm -hmm. single stamp autumn leaves if you want to you know, <gasps> yes. a little bit of green add a little bit of orange or brown mm. around the edges the possibilities for this are really endless and it is so easy. It's literally just a dauber yeah. and a couple of ink pads. Yeah. Super simple. Fab. Next up then we have one of um another one of my favourite days. I say that about all of them. I know. But I'm like quite a big stamper, so <laughs> yeah. I use a lot of this, or I used to use a lot of this, I don't so much anymore. Reverse stamping. So say you have a little dinosaur stamp, but you want him to be the other way around. How do you get that image to be reversed? Well, this is how we do it. So again, I have our lovely green embossing mat down here. This is great for so many techniques, Oh, it isn't is. It? I mean, say you want the two dinosaurs to be looking at each other, Aww. or you want to flip, I don't know, um, some flowers or some foliage around the mm -hmm. other side of a sentiment, for example, or something like that. This is going to work perfectly for you. So, ink up your stamp as normal on a block. And then, this might look like sacrilege, but honestly, it's fine. You're going to want to stamp straight down onto your green mat. One thing you're going to have to be very careful of with this is not to move the stamp on the block or mm -hmm. the stamp block on here. Because this has a tendency to slide, mm -hmm. just be careful. Take your piece of cardstock then, you lay quite it quick as well, don't need to straight do this. down. I might have talked too much. That's what my uh, lovely that. friend is telling me <laughs> here. So let's have a look. No, oh, I still got him. Perfect. So there he is, stamped there. And just to show you how he would look the other way around, as he was meant to be. Oh, there we go. Now you've pair. got two koi dinosaurs. Exactly. <laughs> So a perfect way to reverse any stamp that you want. Mm -hmm. Any kind of silicone mat is going to work for this. Obviously, yeah. this is what we have available. Yeah. Um, there are jelly plates that will work there are. with this. Um, any kind of, like I said, silicone craft type mat that has mm -hmm. a bit of squish. You want something that has that squidge mm -hmm. to be able to get your impression to sit nicely on it and be able to lift it back up again. Yeah, but you need as well... Um, so like our media, uh, not the media grip, that's there. This is textured, so yeah, this yeah. is not going to work. The easy clean, the ink kind of pools on the surface, so that's, yeah. you won't be able to do it with no. like an easy clean. No. But you do need something, like, like this is quite rubbery, isn't it? It's our rubber yes. embossing mat. But it needs to have like a, a smooth surface, mm -hmm. um, something that is 
something anything that's wiped clean so if it's a wiped yes. clean that's a good place to start looking yeah. basically because you have to clean it off afterwards <laughs> yes you do and i have already tested this the red ink does come off it your does red um, your green mat it's not red <laughs> matte or it's a green mat but it does come off and it doesn't stain so that is always a bonus it's very good but it massively extends your stamp collection when you can flip the images over and use them in a different way yeah so have a look through your stamps and see which are going to be perfect for reversing for you the last technique that we have to show you then is called the kiss technique. So this is where you take a plain stamp and you add the impression from another stamp on it before you stamp it onto your project. That's a lot of words. Let me show you what that actually looks like. So I have an older stamp here. This is a flower stamp and you can see that there's no, it's not a line stamp. It is a full stamp with just this one part in the middle that isn't stamped. So I'm going to show you it as it is normally, first of all making sure I've not got red ink all over my thumb. It's going to go over my cardstock <laughs> as well. So just ink that up as normal. I'm just going to stamp that as it would be. So standard normal impression. Mm -hmm. Solid stamp. Uh, exactly. Completely solid. I have a couple of stamp clubs here, again, um, that have lots of different patterns and kind of shapes and things on them. And for this kind of technique, you're going to need a stamp that is ideally bigger than the stamp that you are using, mm -hmm. but that has some kind of pattern on it. So let's try this grid one down here, first of all. I'm just gonna stick it onto my glass mat. I'm gonna ink up my original stamp, so the flower stamp, first of all. I'm going to press it down onto the grid and again you're going to have to be a little bit careful that they don't slide so hopefully you may now be able to see i've left some ink over here oh yes we can see that and you can see that yeah. my flower now has a grid pattern on it so if i stamp that down i now have a nice gridded flower and you can do this with any pattern stamp that you like so let's have a spotty flower shall Some we? spotty flower why not We've got options. Mm -hmm. So again, chuck that down in there. Like a, a crackly flower as well. Yeah, you want a crackly yeah. one? We'll yeah. grab that out in a second. Okay. So again, ink up your original stamp, get your nice ink coverage. As soon as you re-ink this, it doesn't matter if you had that grid pattern still on there, mm. adding ink again, it's gonna fill it in. So you don't need to wipe your stamp in between each one of these. So let's put it down onto the spots. And then, we have a spotty flower. Oh, I like that. You want a crackly one? I want a crackly one. Okay. Ready? This one's kind of like um, electricity crackles or yes. something, isn't it? Yeah. So let's look. come back into okay. its own shape. Inking back up. And again, press straight down. Hopefully you can see that. So just straight down onto the stamp and lift it up. And then press down onto there. Oh, nice. And yes, I like the crackly one. Yeah. <laughs> so this will work with any stamp that has larger stamped areas. So it's not mm -hmm. going to work with a lot of our line art type stamps where mm -hmm. we have images that we die cut out. But these. anything like this. So yeah, mm -hmm. these hexagons on here, you could add, say, this crosshatch pattern to them. And this, uh, this line, the line here. Yeah, you could add maybe this kind of feathering mm -hmm. to it. You could add spots along the line. Yeah. Any two stamps that you think are going to work well together. Nice. Again, you know, look through your stamp stash, have a look at what you've got, and see how much more this extends the options mm. for you. Do you know what I was thinking as well? You've got some quite thick wood in here. So yes, any sentiments that have. Down. Let me just pop the lid on this so we yeah. don't mash red ink everywhere. Uh-huh. I was just thinking of these. Perhaps you could add a so, little yeah, bit of texture to these. Thicker sentiments, you would be able to do it with them. So mm. should we try the happy birthday? Oh, yeah. Crack all that. <gasps> yes. Because you can show as well that you can go along that crackle stamp, can't you? To yes. to bring that Spatter. out. Let me just poof this off here for a second. Boop. Excellent. Pick up Happy Birthday. We'll stamp it normal first, so mm -hmm. you can see how it looks as is. Okay. Plain like happy birthday. Uh huh. And then re ink my stamp. So I could probably go diagonally. Mm hmm. But you're right, I do need to do that last yeah. little bit. There we go. Oh, so now nice. we have. Oh, I like that. 
a crack and your birthday if I hold this up here. Hopefully we are roughly at the edge of the Ooh, <laughs> there we are. Somewhere Lovely. somewhere say when cam. Move it forwards there. And there Lovely. we go. So hopefully now you can see the crackles that we've got in this lower happy birthday here and then all of the different textures in those flowers. And as it well. could match, couldn't it? You could make it yes. match a stamp then, couldn't you? Oh, I like I like that. <laughs> Am I teaching you things today? You are! <laughs> Every day's a school day. <laughs> Hopefully I've taught you some things as well and some different ways to look at the stamps that you've already got in your stash and to do some other things with them. So cleaning and caring for your stamps. Wash your stamps with soapy water before you start. Get all that residue off them from the manufacturing process and where they've been stored and things. Um, what else are we going to do with these? So we've got a couple of different products that we have previously sold and we do currently sell that are going to clean your stamps for you. So the first one, you may have one of these somewhere in your stash, is mm. our Nouveau Stamp Cleaning Pad. So this has... This way, you can see it a bit better. So we've got two sides. It's kind of a bristly texture. Hopefully, you can mm. kind of see the texture that is on this. It's like lots of little. It black... Feels like a thick velvet. Yes. Do you know what I mean? That it's got a lot of, it's got a pile to it. Kind it of has thing. exactly that. It's lots of little tiny fibers, mm -hmm. basically, which are brilliant because it means they're going to get up into your stamp. So where you've mm -hmm. got all of the little crevices behind yeah. on around. It's going to get right into that exactly. pattern, isn't it? We've then got our stamp cleaning solution. Mm -hmm. Lovely stuff. Gets basically any ink off. Give it a good spritz on one side and try and remember which side is which. Not that it really <laughs> matters, but it will help you to keep things a little bit cleaner, especially if you're using red ink. Mm. <laughs> you then take your stamp on your block and you literally just rub it over the surface. So all of those little hairs, those little fibers are gonna get up in between all of the crevices in the stamp clean all of that ink away there you go now i have a nice clean ink uh, clean stamp sorry and then you can use this side to dry it off which Good is idea. what you want to do so mm -hmm. you keep a wet side and a dry side and also this side in theory should then be clean so you don't put any residue back onto the stamp your nice clean mm -hmm. stamp but there you go now it's all crystal clear even with red ink i would like to point out i was out, gonna say that even that's really with good red ink so crystal clear and ready to use again. Okay. But if you have a stamp plant form, obviously trying to rub this over, not so easy. So a couple of options for that. If you're using our stamp cleaning solution, you can use an old microfiber cloth or something like that. Spritz a bit of that on and then just wipe clean stamp. Perfect. The other thing that we have then is our stamp cleaning cloth. We do. So I have mine in a Ziploc bag. Other brands are available. Um, <laughs> because this is wet. So all I've done with this, um, it had dried out and they do dry out. You mm -hmm. literally just run it under some water. I use a bit of warm water until it all went a very dark grey. Wrung it out completely so it's not dripping anymore but it's still damp. Don't put any stamp cleaning solution on this. It is just for water. And then you literally just wipe over the surface of your stamp. Yeah, the beauty of that is you don't get any fibres. Exactly. There's no, it's a completely fibre free. It's like, um, what's like a chamois? Yes. It's that kind of texture. Yeah. Um, you can use this again on stamps on a block. I know this one isn't on a block, but it is going to work on here as well. Or this little spotty one I've got mm -hmm. red ink on over here. Sorry, Cam, for the squeaking. Oh, he's had to take his earphones off. It is, it is a little bit squeaky, I so I do apologise for that. It's, it's nails on a chalkboard, it isn't is, it? It is. <laughs> Very sorry. But then I'm just going to store it straight back into my Ziploc bag. It's going to keep it nice and moist for me, ready to use again in the craft room. But if it does dry out, like I said, you just wash it under mm -hmm. warm water, re-wet it. You can wring all of the old ink out of it. That's right. And it's ready to go again. Excellent. You need to keep your stamps out of direct sunlight as well, don't you? You do. And away from heat and cold and things like that. So normal room temperature in a little box or something but just make sure that they stay flat mm. don't have them at an angle or things you know it's like if you're going to stack these uh, we keep ours upright anyway but if you were mm. going to stack these you could stack them flat 
but just make sure that there's nothing digging into them. Yes, because you will you, ruin the impression. You will. You will dent the surface and then you won't have that clean impression, will you? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, do keep them stored nice and safely. Mm -hmm. um, our dye wallets yes. will work perfectly for this. Yes, they will. Um, the medium, no, the... Designer Choice style one, the A5, A5. style one, um, will work perfectly with your stamp club folders that they already come in. You can mm -hmm. just pop them in there and keep them all nice and safe. That is very or good. I have mine in our luxury storage tray. We do. We keep them upright in a nice luxury storage tray and we've got dividers and they're lovely. Organised <laughs> and neat. Of course, you would expect nothing less at this point, I'm sure. <laughs> so to wrap up, if you do have any questions, mm -hmm please pop them in the comments and we will come back and revisit those for you. Are there any tips you'd like to share? Mm. Join our Facebook group and let us know. We love to hear any any little tips that you've got for us as well. Or share any stamping projects you've been doing if you yes. have been using any of these techniques recently. And we'd love to see what you've been making and we may mm -hmm. feature your project on one of our weekender shows coming that up soon nice. as well. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have found this helpful. Look out for more Tonic Tuesdays coming soon. And we'll see you again. Happy crafting.